I'm looking for someone to share an adventure that I'm arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone. God's Treasure Possession, The Church, next on So What. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Waite, and this is So What? Hey, Chris, that was a quote that I was just reading from The Hobbit, where Gandalf the Grey, the wizard, was speaking to The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins, saying, hey, look, I'm looking for people to go on an adventure with me. And he was excited, right? Uh, he was not very excited at all. In fact, you know, he said, hey, you're not going to find people around here to do that because hobbits find those to be nasty, despicable, horrible things that um, are gonna, just going to make you late for dinner. Late for dinner. What does that have to do with church as a family? Well, it, it has everything to do with redefining table fellowship. Jesus looked at table fellowship, which was very significant in his day, the Jews, and he redefined it. Because in those days, in Jesus' day, the Jews, they used it as an exclusive fellowship. This was something where it's like we keep people out, we don't bring people in, mm -hmm. right? And so it was, it was all a matter of who were the right people to have around the table. Mm -hmm. And it defined who they were as Jews in many ways. Table fellowship was a way to maintain, among other things, ritual and religious purity. Why is that? For those of you who are familiar with Jewish history, you know that in 168 BC, Antiochus IV desecrated the temple. Right. He had decided that Jews were no longer going to be permitted to have their own religion. He wanted all of the people in his empire to worship one god, Zeus. So he sacrificed pigs on the altar in the temple. He compelled them to eat pork and other meats that the scriptures say were unclean because he wanted one people. Well, the Jews revolted. And it was the Maccabean revolt that you read about in the books of First and Second Maccabees. Yeah. The Jews won a miraculous victory. And during that battle and when they won, the Jews looked at that victory as a sign of God's blessing to their, their hardcore stance on maintaining ritual purity and fidelity to the Old Testament commands. So that's what they did. They were, they were hard, hard, hardcore about ritual purity. And that carried through to Jesus' day. The Jews remember that day, they were under Roman occupation. They were oppressed, they were mad, they were frustrated, they were weary, they were really strapped financially. And their grandparents remember the time when they were independent, when they were free from Rome, when they were their own people. Right. And they were their own people because they were ritually pure. And so the Pharisees sort of turned that into a righteous work of maintaining purity and it was a, seg a segregated society. Everyone was separated from everybody else and that was especially true at Table Fellowship. So what's interesting is you look at the Gospel accounts, how many times, oh, yes. have you thought about this, how many times do they focus on Jesus having meals yes. with others? That's right. That's right. Jesus eating with the, the, with the tax collectors and sinners. <gasps> Jesus at the home of a Pharisee and right. his feet are being washed by a, a sinful woman. And, and what about the feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000? Now, you may have read those stories many, many times and thought, wow, it's a big deal. Jesus is con in control right. of the physical realm. And that's true, but you're missing something very important from those stories. You know what's amazing when you think about even the feeding of the 5,000, Chris? The only miracle that's reported in all four Gospels have you ever thought about that? It's oh, yes. the only miracle in all four Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000. You know, I would encourage everybody to read all four accounts. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's incredible. Jesus miracles, yeah. You want to see Jesus' miracles of the feeding of the four and the 5,000. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. But, Chris, you know, I think a lot for a lot of us, when we look at those accounts, what we really hone in on, and rightfully so, is Jesus' power over the natural realm, right? right? right. That he is God. Right. That he can produce something out of nothing. That you can take but, five fishes of five loaves, right? But what's more important? Well, what's, what's really going on? What's he really communicating, Don? Jesus is having an open table fellowship. He has yes. all of these folks here, and he doesn't know who they are. No. He can have tax collectors and sinners, just like in the, in the account from Mark 2.15. Yes. But he can also have pagans. He can have Romans. He can have people that are believing in false gods. They're all there. Pharisees, Sadducees, Jews, Gentiles, women, children, Samaritans. We don't know who all was right. there. Everybody is there. Everybody, and they're all dining together. This was absolutely revolutionary. Totally, to his totally paradigm shifting, earth shattering. Meals were an opportunity to exclude. Meals were an opportunity to maintain social and religious purity and status. And Jesus throws all that out. Amazing. Amazing. Did you ever realize that? How important those miracles were? And that's why it was so offensive, I believe, when, when Jesus again is found in a home 
and he's having a meal with tax collectors and sinners yes. and these people that are unclean. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? If this guy was who he says he is, then why would he do this? Yeah. Well, it's because he was who he said he was That's that right. he did that. He is redefining family. He is saying table fellowship is about all of my people, no matter who they are, Chris. It is inclusive not exclusive. The Jews were all about exclusivity, right. keeping it all right. in, keeping others out. And Jesus is saying no. He's opening the doors and saying, oh no, the, the doors to the family of God are wide open to everybody. He's breaking They're wide open to everybody. And he's breaking down barriers. I mean, think about this. Jesus is, is plowing the way so that eventually folks like you and I, Gentiles, Gentiles. can sit at the table exactly. and have supper with him. Now the Jews, I mean, the, the, the early Christians, they didn't, at first they didn't get it, okay? The, the, I mean, Jesus, his ministry was entirely radical. And, yes. and, and they're certainly, they were, they were present when Jesus fed the four and the 5,000. And they, they should have understood the, sim, the symbolism of it all. But they, they didn't quite get it. They didn't quite get it. They, they really saw that, that Jesus was a ministry, was an opportunity for Jews. But Jesus starting to break down those societal walls, break down those barriers, yeah. and implanting it in their heads and their hearts that no, no, this is not about keeping people out, it's about but bringing, bringing them people in. in. Exactly. So awesome. And what did he say in Acts chapter 1? Go to all of the nations. All of the nations. To all, all, nations, all people. the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth. So that people like you, you and, and me, <laughs> that Amazing. we could be saved and have a bond and have a fellowship and be a family exactly all in the family like we talked right. about in the past that's hey, right. listen we struggle with this chris we, yeah, we all do. struggle with this we do many people listening to this may have been on the receiving end of not being included that's right feeling ostracized yeah feeling yeah. like you didn't have a place at the table that that's really right. i don't belong here right likewise and i challenge people to think about this there may be times when you've been a little uncomfortable with somebody else and you may have thought to yourself you know yeah, I know they say that they're a Christian, that but I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 You know what? Jesus is calling us to inclusiveness, to bringing it together. All kinds of us, Chris. And you know what? It, it can get messy. Yeah. I, I admit it. It can be messy. But you know what? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, again, that Jesus is pulling us all together. This is really what the gospel does. So we look at some of the verses that we were talking about in, in past podcasts, mm -hmm. right, where he's broken down those barriers. This redefining family, redefining table fellowship. That's what Jesus was about. We gather around the truth of Christ's death and resurrection, and that, whether you're black, white, green, purple, right. Jew, Gentile, European, right. American, South American, Mexican, whatever, whatever descent, it doesn't make any difference. We are all one in Christ. Blue collar, white collar, <laughs> rap. Hip hop, country, We're it doesn't all, matter. Oh, not country. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> well, you know what, Chris? We'll even let those guys come. We just won't listen to our music. How about that? As Christians, <laughs> it's not about keeping people out. We don't want to be like the Jews of old. It's about, it's about spreading the good news of Christ. And how are they going to see that message? By our love for one another. another. So rich, so good. Jesus, that radical, having strangers over for supper. Who knew that was so radical? Who knew that was so transformative? But it paved the way for Gentiles. It paved the way for the gospel to come to the Gentiles, which we're going to start looking at next week when we look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Well, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end it here, friends. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and we'll talk to you next week. See you soon.